I spoke to some time back that any church Paul went, he would speak on three things a lot: uh, hope, faith, and love. And he was convinced that if any new congregation was established on these three things, they would do well even in his absence. So, and we see that in one Corinthians thirteen, we spoke about how he said that so the primacy of love, and he said how important hope, faith, and love is, and he said love is the greatest. <laughs> And uh, so, and I think love in action is what is most challenging. It's, it's, it's easy for us to say the words to people, but then to actually live the self-sacrificing love of God is what is challenging. Even the non-believers can give the, you know, brotherly affection as long as you love them back. <laughs> See, but uh, God is looking for the kind of love that He does to us, which is the love of the self-sacrificing love where even if you are rejected you love even if you are slandered you love if you are misunderstood you love yeah so um, so and we are told that this kind of love is shed abroad in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit hallelujah we don't have the capacity to manufacture this kind of love uh, but praise be to God that the Holy Spirit has been given to us and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, God is able to shed about this kind of love in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And God really wants us to be those who see the importance of it. Um, you know, uh, in one of our in one of our prayer meetings, uh, Jesse Bobby said that you know uh, we so much need the sons and daughters of God to be revealed, right? So we have this famous verse in um, Romans. Uh, you can just go there. And she made a very, very interesting point, and you know, I, I had really thought about her. And she said, if more and more sons and daughters of God are being revealed, she said, we'll see the power manifestation happening. We will see, um, we'll see greater breakthroughs. And, uh, you know, when, when we see the enemy rising up. And so I really thought about that, and you know, I really agree with her. And uh, so let's just go to. But let's look at how, how more and more that happens. So, so let's go to... Yes, Romans? Yes, let's do this. Let's do Romans 8. 8.19. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting verse. Romans 8.19. So, to be told that for the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for <laughs> revealing of the sons of God. Mm. Now, we are the sons and daughters of God. Then, what is this whole revealing of the sons of God? Why is the creation longing for the revealing of the sons of God? That means, it's one thing to be a son of God and it's another thing to be acknowledged in the spiritual realms and by creation as, as a son. <laughs> so, uh, it's like you say, just because you're a son, you don't walk in the power of the Father. You know, you can, we can be sons of God and not still walk in the power of Christ, not walk in the compassion of Christ. That's why, just because see, every person who's born again is a son of God, is a daughter of God. But that doesn't mean that we have been mani made manifest as sons and daughters of God to creation. Or to the demonic level. So then, how do we become? How do we become more and more manifest as the sons of God to creation, to the demonic? Level? How do we become those people? Now, interestingly, most of most people try many tricks for greater power in God, greater uh, kingdom breakthroughs. But really, you know, uh, it all boils down to the more we operate like the Father, the more the Father demonstrates, manifests us as sons to creation and to the demonic level. So how you deal with people who persecute you, slander you, hurt you are, has a lot to do with how much God can, how much the demonstration of his sonship, in our, you know, his nature upon us, is made manifest. Uh, and the more we are manifested by him as sons, because we behave like him, the more Kingdom breakthroughs are released through us. The more deeper dimension of presence are released through us. So, so I was, I was really thankful to thankful that you know 
Uh, just remember, brought this up, brought just this thing all about this whole thing about uh, we need more and more believers to be manifested as something about God, and then we will see greater power in this So that's very correct, actually. And so, if we are really desirous of being made manifest by God as sons, you see, not everybody who is a son is being manifested as a son. Not everybody who is a son is being. Um, Acknowledged by the divine realm as the sun, mm-hmm. or by creation as the sun. You see, there were there were there, there were people who tried to cast out demon, and and you know, and the demonic and the demon said, "We know Christ, we know Paul, but who are you?" So it's one thing to be a sun. It's another thing to move in the power of the sun. It's one thing to be a sun. It's another thing to be acknowledged by creation as the sun. By the demonic realm as the son of God. And the more we reflect the nature of our father, the more we become manifest as the son of God and God's of God. And one of the most important things of that is what do we do with people who hurt our heart? What do we do with people who persecute us? What do we do with people who misunderstand us? You know, all those things have a lot of bearing and weight on whether we'll be manifested as sons of God. And the more we walk in greater dimensions of compassion, forgiveness, and blessing. We find that we are we are reflecting the nature of Heavenly Father. And and then he releases to those manifested sons, through the manifest sons and daughters, he releases greater dimension of presence, greater dimension of kingdom, breakthroughs, greater dimension of kingdom power. Hallelujah. 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 So actually the way to the way to get a breakthrough is actually going more humble. <laughs> is actually Coming to a place where you are, you have no choice but to die more to the self. See, when we are slandered, our our, our first reaction is that I want I want to take my revenge. Mm. See, that's the that's the uh, first reaction. But God wants us to die to our first reaction. It's also part of dying to self. I remember hearing this uh, wonderful teacher of the word once. Um, Sri Lankan man was in there. Um, I did for that. I was I was listening to this to this man called Ajit Fernando in a pastor's meeting, and you know I like what he said. He said one of the things he learned to be a good husband is God taught him you have to you know this dying to self includes dying and not giving a first reaction to your wife. You know many times we can give a first reaction to, her. but you see, but you see now if uh, Mr. David. Now see, David acts smart with me. I can freely give my first reaction and slap him. But if Bhaskar acts smart with me, you know, I might control my first reaction. <laughs> see, so it's not that we don't know how to die to the first reaction. We know, but we selectively choose it. So, uh, so, so what God taught this man was, as you as you journey with God of the Holy Spirit, time to self is it includes. Thank you for sharing. And so he said that way he had to learn his marriage because he would go and you know preach great things and then you know uh, if his wife would bring tea legs in the morning, it could really it would really frustrate. And God would say, No, I really can't do this. And so he God spoke to him that dying to self also includes dying to your first reaction. Hallelujah. And he said that's so blessed to man. So now every time he's tempted to give his wife his first reaction, he to remind them, no, but, you know, it's about dying to so you shut up. And don't tell her what you want to tell you tell her what the right thing to tell her. Hallelujah. So you see, our first reaction when we are slandered, attacked, or we are persecuted, our first reaction is, I'm going to also give it back. But God wants us to die to self and not give that reaction. That's a part of dying to self. And God wants us, in fact, to do what he what he would have done, which is do not return evil for your insult for insult, but give a blessing that would inherit a blessing. Uh, when, when, um, when the Lord Jesus uh, was crucified, what was his, what was some of his last words? <laughs> they were these like, forgive them for they do not they do not know what they are doing. Really? So he didn't say, God, give it to them. <laughs> Like some of us would mock it. Some of us hurt my life, some of us hurt my heart. Hear them, Lord. 
That's what he said. He said, Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Such things make you manifest as a son of God, as a God. When you don't give your first reaction, the natural reaction. But, but because of the grace of God, you die to your own reaction and you <coughs> behave as for the divine nature of the Father. You are manifested by him as a son. And he is able to release to you, greater through you, power manifestations. This is the And, you know, I found sometimes uh, blessing those who really hurt your heart. Sometimes it can be the most breaking internally. But it releases amazing grace and strength and peace and power through us. Hallelujah. 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 And so, now we have this uh, interesting verse. Uh, and even, even, even Stephen did this. When Stephen was stoned, what did Stephen say? Stephen didn't say, Lord, remember, take my revenge from this ball. What did he say? But also said the same thing. Forgive them for they do not know what they do. Do, 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 do. And so we see in uh, Luke, Luke again says something like this about not reacting the flesh to attacks, but uh, this. Okay. So if you look at. Um, It's called Luke 6.35. So Luke 6.35. Now look at this. Love your enemies and do good and let expect nothing return and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. Excuse me. I am a son of the Most High. What do you mean? Whether I whether I am whether I do these things or not, I am a son of God. Yes or no? You know, even if I even if I don't forgive people, even if I take revenge from on the evil and the wicked, I am still a son. You don't lose your sonship. But then what's the point? The point is the position I gave you becomes manifest to the to the to the spiritual realm when you behave as per the nature of your father. Not just because you have the position. Hallelujah. You know, we expect Billy Graham's son to behave like Billy Graham. Just because you're the son of Billy Graham, you're not all going to preserve over, wow, Billy Graham's son. Yeah. Franklin Graham doesn't have the same following as Billy Graham. It's not enough to just be a Graham. Correct. But if you would manifest the nature of Billy Graham, a lot more people would be fans of Billy Graham. Or Franklin Graham, and they won't follow Franklin. He's a good guy, but but you know he, he doesn't match up to his father. And it's not enough to be a grand. We will say he is a father's son when he behaves like the father. Yes or no? So just because we are positionally sons doesn't mean that creation recognizes the son and in, and the demonic realm recognizes the son. But when they see in heat, in pressure, under attack. When we manifest the nature of our father, creation takes notice, hallelujah. The demonic realm takes notice, God takes notice, and he releases through that worth and vessel. Greater kingdom breakthrough, greater kingdom presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the way that's that's one of the major ways sons are manifested. And daughters are manifested. Hallelujah. So here we see. It's very interesting. He says, love your enemies. No, you know, when we love someone who's been behaving like an adversary to us, when we love someone who's been behaving like an adversary to us, God says, you are, you are behaving as a son. You are I can manifest you as a son. I can, I can lift you up as a son. Hallelujah. In front of creation, in front of the master. I can release more and more of my divine, uh, my divine nature in and through you. Hallelujah. I can put more on you, stuff. That one question. You know, there's a reason God cannot put too much of his stuff on us. Because you see, uh, an unsanctified vessel will get crushed if God starts putting more of his glory on that person. But a sanctified vessel is more and more strengthened 
when God begins to put three dimensions of glory on that person. But the unsanctified vessel begins to get crushed by the weight of the glory of God put on them. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, it's like, you know, this, uh, this box, you know, if this box was, if this box had some cracks, all right, that's what defining things do, right? If this box had some cracks, and this guy, a uh, person sat on it, it'll break. But right now, person sits on it, it doesn't break. Why? Because it doesn't have those cracks. It has integrity. It's a problem. When we allow defiling things in our life, what happens? There are cracks that come in our foundation. And if God, when something already has a crack and you put more baby things on it, it further breaks down. But sanctified vessels, people are growing in, in, in walking harmony with the Lord. When, you know, God can put them on them, more of His weighty glory. And they are further strengthened. So one reason we see, we see few people walking in power and glory is because if God would put it on unsanctified sons and daughters, it would crush them. So as an act of mercy, God doesn't go around put a great dimension of His glory in power on the sons and daughters. We will request them. You need to be sanctified, prepared to carry the weighty uh, Memphis glory of God, the presence, the presence of God. All right. So. Love your enemies. So when we love enemies, we are being manifested by God as sons and daughters to creation and to demonic love. When we give and we are not, you know, taking them to court to return money to us, we are, we are behaving as sons. And, God, and your reward will be great. Now there is a reward of behaving by His grace as sons. There is a, you know, God rewards the ones whom He can manifest as sons and daughters. People who are more and more demonstrating the nature of the Father, God says, I reward them. I reward them with greater dimensions of my presence, greater dimensions of my grace, greater dimensions of the purity, greater dimensions of kingdom break. I will reward those people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and you see, so when you love your enemies, when you love people who are being an adversary to you, when you lend, when you're generous, you will be sons of the most high. You are, but then you will be manifested as sons of the most Hallelujah. Do creation. There's longing to see the sons of God in the to the demonic realm, then you will be manifested as sons of the Most High. For, why? He will be manifested. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. So when we are kind to ungrateful people, when we are kind to evil people, we are manifesting his nature. And then he says, I can show you all as my son and daughter and put data dimension upon you. Hallelujah. So one reason, one reason, creation is longing and longing and longing and hardly seen sons and daughters being made manifest because we are so, we can, we can so struggle with issues of forgiveness, issues of blessing, issues of time to self and taking grace and being gracious, hallelujah, and praying for people who are most, most of the church would end up giving the first reaction to people. And so they cannot be made manifest to creation or to demonic will in the Son and daughters. But we are told in this verse, if you would start start reflecting the nature of your father, he can then manifest you, he can take you and manifest you in front of creation, in front of the demonic realm, as a son, and put greater stuff on you. That's divine and purpose. And it won't crush you, it's something. And it's in the purpose of the purpose. Are you doing? And so, so pressure on this is very important because uh, if, if we are serious as, as a church to walk into greater dimension of kingdom blessing, kingdom breakthroughs, we need to become these people. Or we miss out. We cannot be those who keep giving the first right to people. We cannot be those who are um, not being gracious in dealing with one another. It's so important. It's so important to our people. We cannot be those who are uh, cursing, for example, the right way. We cannot be those people. We cannot be those people who, who just don't know how to deal with someone they think is being an adversary. <laughs> this is part important for God, how we navigate this conversation. So, 
So when you love your enemy or you love someone, be very adversary to you. When you are generous to ungrateful people, when you are being kind to ungrateful people, to evil people, what God is saying is, you are reflecting my nature. And I am, and I am, that, and it's like that frees me. And that kind of uh, gives me the liberty to then take such a one and make him of a man in front of creation, in front of the one as well. And I am, and I put more and more on them of my divine provision. And these are the ones who might do greater kingdom breakthroughs. Are you? I recently heard a wonderful man about saying that um, uh, whenever he prays for his sons and his and his uh, uh, daughter and, and wife, after that he says he, he prays for five people. Several thought him he'll name his five friends. He said no. He said there are five people who have devoted their life to to stand them to speak against my ministry. And she says, then I love these five people. Because, because um, he's convinced that when I pray for them, bless them, the ones who have been ungrateful with him. He said, that's how I am. I am behaving like my father. And he can more and more manifest me as a son and put more and more of divine stuff on. Hallelujah. And you know, you try this. It can be one of the most praying internally for a person. But that's how you grow in the room of Christ. That's how we grow in three dimensions of presence. That's how we grow in three dimensions of kingdom break. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Okay, how do I know because I do it? How do I know because I do it? I can tell you, it's, it can sort of be so breaking internally to bless people in San so difficult. But then when you do it, that's when you, you can clearly sense the pleasure of God. You clearly see, you can perceive how much he's doing something in terms of Hallelujah. There's a peace release, there's a grace release which cannot come any other way. Hallelujah. So, can we read this video? Love you anyways, and do good and learn. Expect nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil. So, and so you see, and then it starts to make more sense. Why guys like Peter said to us in 1 Peter 3, do not return evil for evil or insult for insult, but give up. Blessing because you see, there were people who knew they knew the way to greater kingdom breakthroughs, greater power manifestation through your life is the way of love, it is the way of blessing, it is the way of being gracious. It's not the way of taking your revenge, being revengeful and revengeful. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, in the last three four months, two people slandered me in a way that it's beyond my imagination. My imagine you just even my imagination cannot think that I can do those things. You see, and and eventually, you know, I had to go to the I had to come to the point of Lord, I cannot defend myself. You will have to vindicate me in your own time. You know, you know uh, things like you know accusations which I cannot even imagine. Uh, have come to, uh, and, and interestingly, uh, and 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 interesting, these two people. One of them had left many years back, and one of them uh, hasn't come come for a long time to the church. So that is even more interesting. You see, uh, accusation came from people who are regularly interacting with you is easier to figure out. <laughs> but accusations coming from people who left many years back, or people who haven't come for a very long time. You know, it's just it's like, how could he even think so? <laughs> in this so. How could you even even be so bright as to think so, so intuitively or so imagine what a great imagination you have, you know? And so uh, when the second one one came, I just said, I said, Lord, I am, uh, you know, there's no point. And you will vindicate it. What I can do is I can bless this person. 
and is a lot time. Bless this person, body, soul, and spirit. And I pray that you help this person. I speak shalom on this person. And you will vindicate me in your time. Hallelujah. And there's something that is done in the spiritual realm, something shifts in the spiritual realm. When we stop fighting for our own vindication, and we trust God for vindication, and we start blessing Him. Hallelujah. 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 Dear Moody used to say that uh, if you take care of your character, God will take care of reputation. See, so many times, you know, we can get so stressed out about character. What do people think of me? What do people think of me? What do people think of me? You know, that time when there's not much you can do about it. <laughs> and especially with social media. Hey, one nasty person about you. And you have no control over what hundreds of thousands people think about you. What do you do then? You still have to go and rest in this dog. And you bless those people and rest in this dog. The second person I spoke about has, has written something asked you on Facebook about the leadership of the church. It hasn't been, it hasn't come for quite a while. And you see, uh, now there is nothing I can do. Hundreds of them have it. <coughs> but only I can. I can choose to live like a son and bless this person. And I can choose to rest in my God to win the gift in his mind. Hallelujah. That's my choice. And if I can do that, that's when deeper dimensions of his presence are put on us. That's when deeper dimensions can break through what So um, let's also go to Romans. Okay, so if you can go to so, so, so Romans 12, and uh, this passage, the heading in my Bible is written Love in Action. Romans 12, verse 9 to 18. Okay, so we're going to go to Romans 12 and start with verse 9. The Father demonstrated his love to us by crushing Jesus on the cross. He wants us also to demonstrate the love of God at work in us. Hallelujah. And Romans gives us very practical way. This is Romans 12, 9 to how you must demonstrate and you can demonstrate the agape love of God. Hallelujah. Love God that would So it says, for example, let love be without hypocrisy or let your love be sincere. We show also that, that we love God and love people when we hate what is evil and cling to what is good. good. Because we love God, because we love God and love people, we hate what is evil and do what is good. Hallelujah. So our love, our, the fact that we are, we are walking in this agape love of God is demonstrated when our love is sincere and we are not play acting. You know the word hypocrisy in the original language means acting. So if you're a hypocrite, in the original language what they meant was you, you are a good actor. You say one thing with your mouth and something else in your heart. So the word hypocrite in the original language is translated as actor. You're a hypocrite, you're an actor, you're a good actor. You have one thing in your mouth, one thing in your heart. So, so, so when we are not hypocrites in dealing with people, loving people, but our love is sincere, we are demonstrating that the love of God is still in us. Hallelujah. When we hear what is evil and cling to that which is good and do what is good, we are demonstrating the love of God is working on us. Next, be devoted to one another brotherly affection. Wow. This one is difficult, right? <coughs> if you don't do what I tell you to do, you're not loving me, brother. See, generally, most of our heartaches are this. I feel loved when you do what I want. If you don't do what I want, you're not loving me. That's one of the main heartaches we find in when we try to do brotherly affection. As long as I do what Bridges wants, be the good brother, let's just say. So, you know, Bridges will be like, because I don't know everything Bridges wants. One day, decide, no, Bridges, I don't agree, I'm going to do this. And we can get affected. And so, you don't love me. <coughs> so, maybe our definition of the affection can be, as long as you do what I say, you love me. But that's not the definition of God. So, so, 
when you are devoted, devoted to a strong word, you know, uh, generally we, the word devotion, we see mothers and children. We see mothers are very devoted to their, loving their children. You know, the word devotion, when I think of the word devotion, I think of mothers. And the way they are so devoted to loving their children. And God is saying, be devoted to one another in brotherly affection. Brotherly affection. Hallelujah. Brotherly affection. Are we being devoted to one another brotherly affection? Give preference to one another in honor. Give preference to one another in honor. If I think highly of myself, I will want all the preference. If I am humble, I am fine with honoring other people. Hallelujah. Right? Yeah, that's true. So, so if I am, if I am a person who, who thinks others are rather more highly than myself, and I treat people with honor, I am actually doing the love of God. If I am devoted to people in brotherly affection or sister to sisterly affection, then I am invested in the love of God. So this is showing love in action. Not like bad and diligence, fervent in my spirit, serving the Lord. When we fervently serve the Lord with diligence, we are showing our, how much we are faithful to the love of God for Him and for people. Hallelujah. Rejoicing in hope. See, only when you, when, when you are moving the love of God can you be person who rejoices in hope. Because, because Christ is your hope. Hallelujah. His love, His unconditional love is your hope. Persevering in tribulation, people who are moving, feasting one more, the love that God has for them are able to persevere in tribulation because they know even if nobody loves me, God loves me. And they have hope in the midst of all the tribulation that you know that, that I have someone who actually loves me, someone who's committed to helping me. So we are able to persevere in tribulation. Hallelujah. Devoted to prayer. We move in the love God, you more devoted to prayer. Why devoted to prayer? Because you realize you so much want good for people. And you know that prayer is going to get it done. You know, uh, over the years, one of the things that, that, that you know, you know, I've realized, which I was, which I was telling my wife yesterday also, was that uh, in these um, since I got to church plant, the one thing I realized is, uh, if I talk less to people and pray more for them, those people do better. <laughs> so you know, mm, uh, if I see something right with that. I can tell him, tell, tell him 10 times a different way at the same time. It doesn't help him so much. I tell him once and I pray 9 times, it, it has a great effect. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So, so, so you see, when you are more and more moving in the love of, love of God for people, you start praying for them. Because you realize, my, my, uh, my influence through persuasion, is nothing compared to the Holy Spirit's influence of persuasion through my prayers. I will be. So you begin to more and more push in prayer that the Holy Spirit will persuade you. Hallelujah. Because you see, even when we speak, the Holy Spirit does persuade people. But many a time, you see what happens is when people are open to critical input, it's best to leave it there. And then we can the God bless them that the Lord would. Holy Spirit will bring it up. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is working in me. Hallelujah. You know, as, as a as a young elder, I was very I was very discouraged uh, as a young elder. You know, when I just started as a young elder because I was thirty one and I found nobody wanted to, wanted to hear what I had to say. Then I was thirty one. And they are valid. Why do a young boy want to teach me? So I was then all disappointed. Then I'm like, man, I'm off. And so. And so I remember I called him a spiritual father and I said, I said, you know, my age has no problem. So he said, you know, he said, uh, something I never forgot. He said, you know, if you want to, if you love people and you want people, people's lives, uh, if you want people to more and more mature in Christ, there's a three things you need to keep doing for them. Persist in loving them, persist in praying for them, persist in watching them. If you want people to change, if you want people, so you see the uh, the shepherds have been given the task, the mandate that they have to present the people God gave them. They have to help those people and present them mature and mature. Now, 
how do you do that when your will power keeps coming in the way? <laughs> People's will power keeps coming in the way of the master. Their, their free choice keeps coming in the way also. So, yeah. How do you do it? Persistent three things what he taught. Persistent loving people, praying for people, washing people with the truth. And eventually as you do that, the Holy Spirit is going to work in that. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is going to work our transformation. And so, uh, people who are really moving the love of God become more devoted to prayer because they more realize that what you know, there is so less that I can do, but there is so much the Holy Spirit should do if I would pray. The Holy Spirit is a very persuasive person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. <coughs> Contributing to the needs of the saints. When I am being generous to people, it's a manifestation that I'm moving the love of God. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, you know, uh, and uh, practicing hospitality. When I am willing to open my house in a wise way for the work of God, it's a manifestation of the fact I'm moving in the love of God. Being hospitable in, in the way, uh, you know, being hospitable in the wisdom of God is a demonstration. I'm moving the love of God. No. Hallelujah. So Paul, you see, it's interesting, Paul wrote, wrote so much about love and action because he was convinced love has to be Love has to be We just can't say, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love people, I love people. But his point was, hey, that doesn't help as long as it's not being tangibly demonstrated. And so here, Paul has given us, Apostle Paul has given us many ways in which if you are really moving the love of God, that love gets they are not straight <coughs> and just do it well and help so many people. Hallelujah. Next is anything else? Yes. Ah, I still go, going on. Bless those who Bless. persecute you. Bless and not curse. So if you are really moving in the self sacrificing love of God, you are going to be a person who will bless people and not curse people. Uh, those who persecute you, those who slander you, those who uh, misunderstand you, and then say all on that account. So, if you are really going in the love of God, you'll be able to bless them. Hallelujah. And you won't curse them. And Peter says, 1 Peter 3 says, that if you bless, God multiplies the will by you. So, you go to 1 Peter 3. So, if you go to 1, 1 Peter 3. And uh, some in the middle, I think it is there. Yeah, was... And uh, yeah, can you can you find this was eight onwards? Eight onwards. Okay. So here Peter is talking. To, to sum up, let all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind hearted, humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. Then what happens? For you are called for the very purpose that you may inherit a blessing. Certain blessings that are into our account are not coming into our hand because we are not blessing certain people. That God wants us to bless. People who insult us, or people who slander us, or people who speak evil on account of us. You know, the loop doesn't get closed by just forgiving them. You have to bless them. That's why the loop gets closed. And, and the motivation also is given, Godly motivation is here. That if you would bless people who've been insulting you or slandering you, God says, as you bless, as you bless, the Holy Spirit will release blessings in from your account into your hand. You know, when when we were born again, a heavenly account was opened up for us. Hallelujah. And the fullness of salvation which is by the cross was put into that heavenly account. And when we start blessing people who are speaking evil of us, or slandering us, or persecuting us, 
consulting us. The Holy Spirit is able to release to us certain blessings which could not be released in any other way into our land. So many of our blessings are stuck because we are not blessing people who insulted us or who slandered us or who spoke evil of us. And if we would only take grace and forgive and start blessing those people, we would find certain certain things that are stuck if we would find kingdom breakthrough strategy. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go back uh, to Romans 12. Yeah, bless those who persecute you. Bless and not curse. So when we bless and not curse, we are manifesting that you're moving the love of God. Next. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Now, what is our attitude toward the people who are weeping? In the world, most people run away from depressive people. Suddenly you lose all your friends. If you start talking, I'm down, I'm not dying, I'm not really spending with my life. Suddenly what happened? All our friends are running away. Because if they were with us as long as they could have fun and we used to make them happy. Now when we are not making them feel happy, we are downloading our evidence, most people run away. But the Christian is supposed to rejoice with those rejoicing and weep with those who are weeping. He's supposed to, he's not supposed to be freaked out because you're downloading your heaviness. He's supposed to, in fact, rebuke that spirit of heaviness on you. And comfort. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's a manifestation. When we are not getting freaked out around depressive people, but we are able to, in the wisdom of God, Counsel them, bless them, comfort them. We are manifesting, we are moving in the Lord. Hallelujah. In fact, the Lord God will compel us to love them. Hallelujah. And, and you know, I, I, this this verse, I, you know, I got an interesting uh, example of this verse. Uh, rejoice with those rejoice and weep with those weep. In the US, they had this big fire in California. And a very interesting thing, some houses got burned and some houses are intact. Okay. Now, so there are people in the same church, okay, people come to the same church, some of the houses are burned and some of the houses are intact. And the pastor was also intact. So the pastor stood up and said, <laughs> he said, you know, I am so grateful my house didn't get burned. And so I rejoice with all those houses that get burned. But I know many of our church members' houses got burnt and you're weeping, so I weep with you whose houses got burnt. Hallelujah. 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 And he, and he told the people whose houses didn't get burnt, you should not feel miserable. Why my house didn't get burnt, seeing all the all day misery. Praise God that your house didn't get burnt. Now, go and weep with them. You, you've done your rejoicing. Now go weep with those whose house did get burned and help them to stand on God. Yes. Hallelujah. So rejoice with those who are rejoicing, weep with those who are weeping. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday was a day of celebration in the Wilkinson household. Now we don't go and nah, nah, I'm probably I'm gonna weep now. No. Mr. Wilkinson, let's rejoice with you. Praise God, that means so wonderful. And then we can go to another house where something very bad happened and we can start pretty quick with them. We can rejoice and we can, we can start from them. Hallelujah. So we rejoice with those who are rejoicing and we weep with those who are weeping. weeping. Hallelujah. And, and through it all, Christ is glorified in the truth. Be of the same mind as one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the Lord. This is an interesting one. If you're really moving in the love of God, you will not give to class divide. Here in the church, we have class divide. People of a certain class, only associate with people of a certain class. And that, it should not be that. Because you see, Paul said very clearly, if a rich man came, and you treat him different than the poor man, then what are you doing? You're doing favoritism, I don't like it. <laughs> so, you know, when we think I'm something, when I, when I think I'm something, 
I will not associate with people. I think I'm alone. But if I'm convinced, I'm not, and, and I'm all that I am because of the grace of God. I'm able to associate with anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you deal with, you know, how you deal with the, how I would deal with the poorest person in the church. I would deal with the weakest person in the church. Actually reflects whether I'm really walking without God. Anybody, anybody can deal very well with people who are too extreme people. Because they can do it to you. But how are we dealing with people who can't give us a return at all? And we know they can't give a return. But God says, if you could associate with the lowly who can't give a return to you, you reflect my self-sacrifice. You reflect my nature. So, may God help us not to be those, at least in the church, they should be no class. They should not divide on the basis of cars, on the basis of color, on the basis of you know, education or whatever. You don't bring it divine. Because it's, because you see, we're told in Christ, all man barriers are broken down in Christ. There is no Jew, there is no Gentile. And we just don't stop at you Gentile. We, you know, it, it has a deeper connotation. All man made barriers are separate people, are broken down by Christ. Hallelujah. In society, in UP, they have. Even today, Dalit Christian churches and Tamil Christian churches. How can that be? How can that be? It's all right. Then why, what's the point of the new creation? Mm. If I am a Tamil, after many Christ also, I'm not a new creation, I'm a Tamil. If I'm a Dalit, after many Christ, then I'm not a Christian, I'm a Dalit. Aren't I supposed to have new identity? You know, I come from the Jat community and uh, we is from the Jat community. But for me, you know, we is not anything special. You all are special. We is a brother and he's a brother. My Jat identity no longer holds in my heart. I'm a new creation. What is my identity? Christian. That's my identity. So it doesn't matter from where you guys come. They are brothers, sisters. He's come for the first time. He's my brother. But it doesn't matter from where he comes. His identity is the son of God. My identity is the son of God. We are brothers. Are you? And why? And there cannot be those divides. It hurts and grieves the Holy Spirit. Yes. I remember someone, someone once came to meet me from a... You know, I thought, I thought a church was, was pretty affluent, but... Someone came to me from a church, affluent church. So this person talks, spoke and said, and this was actually said to me, very really honest. You're a very middle class pastor. You're a very middle class person. <laughs> I said, no, my church is all middle class. And I'm not very few rich people. I said, no, but our church is upper middle class. <laughs> and uh, many times we find that certain churches, because they're upper middle class, all the upper middle class is one of them go there. Or if we have a middle class church, every middle class person wants to come. And this class divides the heart of God. Everyone should be perfect. Everyone should be perfect. Everyone should be perfect. And if we are able to do that, we are really moving in the love of God. Do not be wise in your estimation. Uh, never pay back evil for evil. Are, how many times Peter Paul you going to say these things to us? <laughs> Today itself I have shown you so many verses, the same thing Peter and Paul. Don't it don't return evil for evil in circle, don't return evil. In fact, Yahweh the Garan never pay back. Is that don't pay back evil for evil? Paul, I heard you first time. No, you didn't. <laughs> you need repetition, you need repetition, you need to be, you, I need to reinforce it, I need to reinforce it, that's what Paul is doing, that's what Peter keeps doing. They keep reinforcing in our hearts things like, never be paying for fewer pay. Because our first action is, I will be paying for What is the first action? I will be paying for So what is, what, so if you read that to Paul and Peter, very often what they are saying, but yeah, don't return your favor and so on. And now here he is saying, kuch bhi ho jaye. Evil for your mother. 
Never, never, never. Play evil for? Because if they knew how much such things ever there or whether we will ever be manifested as sons of God or not in front of creation and in front of the demand. And they knew how these things are related to kingdom breakthrough. And and the grace of God among us. So never pay back evil for evil to never pay back. He say. Respect what is right in the sight of all. Be honorable. If possible, as far as depends on you, be at peace with all. We should practice reconciliation as a. In fact, how do we take the how do we take the message of reconciliation to the lost? Effectively, when we have so much unreconciled relations with our lives, the problem, isn't it? The more we walk in reconciled relationships among us. I believe the more God can bless when we go to the lost with messages of reconciliation. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we have to be buddy chummy with every believer. I'm not saying that. And God is not saying that. But God doesn't want us to carry grudge, resentment for anyone. And in fact, He would like us to have to create avenues where there can be. It's, they can be an honorable engagement with everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so your desire to walk reconciled with people is a manifestation of your moving the love of God. Hallelujah. And we see, you see, Paul, Paul had the sharp disagreement with Barnabas and they separated. And it alone mark. Their uh, sharp disagreement was a person called Mark. And in the later letters of Paul, Paul is actually using Mark for the information. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. The fellow, because of whom two amazing men of God fought, sharp disagreement, they never did ministry together. Paul, he went to so much in God that he even found a way of loving Mark. And the reading mark in the book of the Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. So if possible, if I depend on you, be at peace with all men. I'd just like to add one thing here. See, you clearly um, cannot have on to engagement with the people, but if they also are willing to be concerned. But at least in your heart. You can be a person who can walk free yes. in your heart. Yes. And that's something God expects from you. That even if someone is not willing to reconcile, at least we must take grace and forgive them to rest of our And release that from Release that resentment. Release that bitterness. Release it. Yes. And from our heart, we should be able to bless them. And, 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 and we should be able to weep for the well-being from our Hallelujah. 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 And we can keep crying. Open up every news, Lord. I want an honorable engagement with people. Whether there has been a bit I want opportunities and evidence of honorable engagement. Never. Paul is like. Kuch bhi ho jaye, revenge nahi lena apna bhai. Never. So interesting. These guys, they're like, you know, they're father in the faith, and they so much want us to get it. They're like, I, they're, they're like, we know, we know, because we know from where we've come. Mat kulo, yeah, first reaction, mat kulo, mat kulo, mat kulo. That's the point. Again, it goes to never. Whatever happens, don't take your own revenge. Hallelujah. Never. Never take your own revenge. Never take your own revenge, beloved. 
but leave room for the wrath of God, for certain vengeance is mine, and I will replace it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Pastor, it's so important. It is so important. It is so important. The word never it has to be known. Paul, Peter, knew our first reaction always is going to be to take revenge. The first reaction <laughs> always is going to be to get back. And so they said in so many different ways, never take a revenge. Never do evil for you. Because they knew this is how, this is how we will manifest more and more the character of our Heavenly Father. And this is what helps the Father so much, to lift us up and manifest in our sons and daughters in front of creation, in front of the demand world. And more and more such ones find God can release upon them. God can release upon them. Brothers, God can release upon them deeper dimensions of purity. Hallelujah. 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 So let's just take some time questions once.